right. Um, this is my last one. It's called Ain't No Grave Can Hold My Body Down. artistic license, I think, that uh, makes a place like this work. They do what they want. I think uh, right now it's been mainly word of mouth. You know, and we get all ages and all types of people, you know, conservatives, crazies, everything, you know, and they all, the great thing is, is that they all get along and have a good time. I'm a white guy in Iowa doing something called the G joint. You know? All right, up next we got uh, Los Diablos del Sol. And if you guys haven't heard them, they're kind of uh, rockabilly punk blues. My understanding of a juke joint is just any space at, at all that you can fit a, a live band and, and have a good time listening to music. Um, my understanding of their beginning was, uh, you know, down south. Uh, you know, blacks didn't have that many opportunities to, uh, you know, just to go see live music. Uh, so they would have their own their own spaces where they would have their own bands play and go there on the weekends and have a good time. And all I know is that they were like, you know, kind of sleazy and kind of kick ass, and everyone there had a good time, you know, and, and uh, it was the kind of thing where everyone just got together and uh, it just, you know. The society around them didn't necessarily want them to be doing what they were doing, but they all got together and they had their fun and they did their thing, and uh, that's just what we do here. got me interested in that idea. The reason we call our place a juke joint is because that I idea is um, what I was interested in. The idea of going just just to have a good time, you know, to see live bands. And in, this, and in a certain sense, we were in the same position because the type of music that all of the performers who play here do is not the type of music that bars are interested in having, you know. So we have all these great musicians around and they don't have any place to play. And so we're in the same sort of situation. Um, 
in a certain respect that the, that the blacks were at that period of time where we didn't have any place to play we didn't have any place to go and so we do it on our own and we any place we can find uh, large enough to hold the band that's, that's you know where we're gonna play <laughs> fact that everyone's here for the music you know no one's here to you know pick up a date or to, to drink as much beer as they possibly can in the evening they're, they're here for the music and, and you know they're they're much more appreciative of the music than at a lot of the bars you know, that we play the reason that uh, bars aren't interested in booking bands like us is they don't think that we're gonna make them any money but as you saw I mean we had to show here a place that'll hold 40 people, we had 100 people show up. Well, I don't do it any place else. I don't do it in bars. There's no, there's no place for bars, you know, as far as this goes with me. Bars aren't interested in having young people play because they don't have a, an automatic crowd to draw, you know? And that's really unfortunate because even though those, uh, those people down there were young, they still had the, the plan, their plan from the heart, you know? And that's the important thing. I think the, uh, the culture of the juke joint kind of speaks for itself with the people getting together and dance. They don't need to uh, go to a bar or go to some establishment or something like that. We can do it right here. Well, I think just the raw energy. I mean, everybody's crammed in that tiny little space and it's totally different than a bar. It's just, you can feel it. And, and I can't help it when I'm playing just to have a huge smile on my face because it just, you can just feel everybody else's energy and how much fun they're having. And a lot of times when you play other places, there's so much separation, you just don't feel that same energy. I play harder and, and, and I get a lot more feedback from the audience. It's just, it's, a, it's just energy. <laughs> I just don't understand what the deal is with musicians who feel that they got to be up on a stage and separated from their audience. I don't understand what the point of that is. I mean, the whole point is to like communicate with an audience, uh, and, and for the audience to be able to feel as if they're a part of what's going on with the music. And to separate them just seems ridiculous. And I know we have this chicken wire here, but actually, it actually serves a purpose sometimes to keep from pulling us into the crowd. But I think when you're when you're doing anything live in front of a group of people. If you're not having something to do with the crowd, well, then you're a chump. I mean, there's a definite interaction going on here, you know? I mean, and I, that's extremely important to make, to let those people know that we don't, we're not interested in being separated from them. We want to be involved. We want them to be involved, you know? And I, I think this works perfectly. That's, I mean, it's great. I like the small size. I like being close, you know? <laughs> Rally Street, LTX, 
and straw man. Give it up for the Rough Houses. Give it up for the Rough Houses, folks. Woo. Now you all, you all stay away from the blue coat man on the way home. They clear the blue coat man, all right, folks. We don't want no one getting arrested. Woo. Most people will go to see a live band to uh, forget about their problems. But that's not, that's not why I want people to come see, to the juke joints. I want people to come to the juke joints because they want to feel good. They want to feel good, not, not feel bad. You know what I mean? And I think there's a big difference there. And I think that's a, lot of, uh, that's a problem with the way people socialize today. You know? What I want is definitely some socialization going on there. I want people to be able to, to realize that even though someone may be totally different than themselves, they can there's something there that connects everybody, you know, something that they have in common. And uh, um, and even more than that, what I want them to get is I want them to have some sort of emotional feeling, you know, um, because that is what music is all about. If it doesn't have some passion and it doesn't have some emotion, then in my opinion, it's not music. And that's got, that has to be there, you know, and that's something in a small place like this, you know, really gets across. And I think this works really well here in Iowa because, you know, there's people that are looking for that and there's no place else to find it. All right, everybody, this is our last song. This is once again a song about our dog, the Foxhound. Tell us about the Foxhound. He's a dog from hell. Yeah, he's a dog from hell. See, what has he done? He's jumped off a third-story window. Jumped out a third-story window. He's been hit by a car. Shoot through an electric cord that was plugged in. Oh, no. <laughs> On the same day? It was a two-day period. Right? <laughs> and uh, anyway, this song is about him. It's called You Low Down, Dirty, Filthy, Smelly Dog. <laughs> Here we go. We yo and low down, dirty, filthy, smelly dog.
Rough so uh, going outside, pants out, come back.